What's up everybody? Welcome back to another video. Mark Green here from diabetesdietguide.com and today we are talking about six reasons why you have high blood glucose levels with type 2 diabetes and what you can do about it. Because I'm nice like that, obviously I'm not just going to tell you what's causing it, I'm going to tell you ways that you can help address those issues. Before we jump in, remember, check out the blog diabetesdietguide.com where we've got a bunch of free information for you to help get on top of your glucose levels. And we also have consultancy and programs that are now amalgamated to give you all the information that you need to overcome your challenges with diabetes. And this is exactly the sort of stuff we work with clients with to improve their long-term health outcomes. Anyway, let's jump right in and get into the video. Number one, liver glucose production. All right, number one on our list is something called liver glycolysis. So glycolysis is just a fancy word to say release of glucose. So your liver is the engine room of your body. It directs the nutrients where they need to go um, and processes all the things that we put in our body in order to keep the body working and functioning as it should. So essentially it is that motor that keeps things ticking over. And that includes releasing glucose into the body. So the liver actually stores glucose as something called glycogen, and then it releases it in times of need, i.e. when you're not eating to top up those energy stores. Now the problem with diabetes is actually the liver has a big role with why blood glucose levels go high. So essentially what happens is insulin is usually released from the body, which tells the body to turn off its internal production of glucose or massively reduce it. So essentially it goes to the liver and says, we got enough glucose, we don't need you to be doing any extra top ups at the moment. Liver turns off and therefore we can digest our food and then the liver kicks back in. Now the problem with type 2 diabetes is there tends to be some form of fatty liver with type 2 diabetes, where there's type 2 diabetes, there's usually fatty liver. And so the insulin isn't getting to the liver as it once could. So this is what insulin resistance is essentially. So it's not been able to get to the liver to turn off that glucose production. So your liver keeps releasing extra glucose on top of what you're already eating. So your baseline glucose levels are elevated. And you probably noticed that when you were diagnosed that your glucose levels were above what they should be. And then obviously when you eat on top of that elevated baseline level already, it just further increases the glucose levels. So the idea is with a lot of the medications is to reduce that baseline glucose level and then that helps you start the day off a lot better. And metformin, which is the first line diabetes therapy and type 2 diabetes still after all these years, does just that. It tells the liver to reduce the amount of glucose it's releasing so you start the day off a lot better than what you previously would have. Obviously there's other medications available which work in certain different ways but metformin is still number one in terms of first line therapy for type 2 diabetes and that's one of the main reasons. Obviously the other thing you can do is start to break up that fat in the liver. So the liver is quite a handy organ in the sense that if there's damage to it we can sort of turn back the clock to a certain extent. So getting physically active and trying to be as healthy as possible will help break up that liver fat and return it to its once youthful and healthy um, origins. Number two, too much carbohydrates. Number two on our list is obviously the types of things that we're eating. We know carbohydrates are the foods that increase blood glucose levels. Does it mean they're bad? Absolutely not. Does it mean someone with type 2 diabetes might have a problem with them if they eat too many of them? Absolutely. So trying to reduce the amount of carbohydrates in your diet can only help. We wouldn't go to extremes where you cut them out entirely because you lose some of the benefits that they provide. Plus, we're also thinking about long term sustainability. Some people can cut them out and be absolutely fine but most people find that really difficult. We've done a video just last week on how many carbohydrates you should be eating with type two diabetes with some very practical examples of how to reduce the carb intake, but still keeping that diet sustainable. Check it out and I'll link to it at the end of this video. So make sure you watch to the end to make sure that you can see that video. Number three, not enough exercise short term. The beauty of exercise is, is it actually takes energy to do it. So you are burning up glucose, fat and protein when you exercise. So the more you do of it, the more energy you're going to burn up and therefore the more glucose you're also going to expend. So if you're expending glucose, that's going to help reduce your overall glucose levels. So just on a day to day basis, the more active you can be is only going to help reduce those glucose levels. It also has the added benefit of helping to break up this liver fat 
which will then help reduce your baseline glucose level and therefore you start to um, undo the progression of the diabetes and get you back to a much um, a safer foundation or a solid foundation from when you're managing the diabetes in the long run. Number four, not enough exercise long term. So number four obviously sounds the same as number three, but it's not because now we're looking long term. So why have I differentiated between the two? So short term, you're burning up glucose and that's fantastic. It's gonna help keep the glucose levels lower. Longer term though, if you're able to exercise regularly, it gives you a bigger margin in your diet. So you're not having to constantly restrict calories and swim against the tide to achieve um, lower glucose levels and weight loss. So it gives you all the benefits of what I said in number three, in terms of like liver, fat breakup, et cetera, and giving you a better foundation. But also longer term, it gives you a bigger chance of winning. Number five, wrong medications. Now, obviously you go to the doctors or you get diagnosed usually by someone in healthcare and they will usually put you on medication. There are some of those who are dietary controlled, but essentially if you don't do something about type two diabetes, i.e. get active and start changing your diet, it generally gets worse. So at some point, everyone with type two is gonna meet some form of medication. Now that can be quite intense therapy or it can be quite modest therapy. And that will depend on your glucose levels, your age, um, and your risk factors essentially. But the point is that if you're having high glucose levels, it's not beyond belief to see some people that are on the wrong medications. And it's easily done, you know, you go see the diabetes nurse, um, things are good, you go away, you go home, but then over the course of the year, things change, something happens like COVID say, you don't check in with the diabetes nurse and they don't check in with you. And then before you know it, it's been two or three years Glucose levels have changed from what they previously were, but you're on the same medications. It's no longer working for you. So we might have to change things. And it also does happen sometimes, which is unfortunate, but it's worth talking about. Sometimes you might be seen by a non-diabetes specialist and they'll just follow the guidelines and they'll put you on the first line therapy or the second line therapy. But actually in your particular circumstances, that might not be the right therapy for you. And you know, it takes a specialist then to look at it and sort of unpick it a little bit and put you on the right therapy. So if you're having high glucose levels and the above hasn't worked, definitely speak with your GP, your practice nurse or your diabetes team and see if there's another option for you. Number six, overweight. Well, we saved the best for last because being overweight and obese accounts for over 80% of cases for type two diabetes. So it is a big contributor and it's why diabetes gets so much spotlight in the media and in health. And it's because most cases are either completely preventable or could be delayed well into the future. So it costs the NHS a huge amount. Now we live in an obesogenic environment. It's easier to be overweight than, it's easy, than it is to be a normal weight. And that's because we're surrounded by temptation. It's, we're the first generation that has to physically go out of our way to exercise. And so it is just a recipe for weight gain. But being overweight or obese, means that you develop this insulin resistance in the context of type two diabetes, which then starts to lay fat into the liver, which then raises that baseline glucose level. The insulin isn't working as well as it used to, which is trying to lower your glucose levels. It's there, but the message isn't being heard. So glucose levels continue to rise. You can't eat as many carbohydrates as you previously could because they turn to glucose. And then that system just tends to be in a positive feedback loop and further exaggerates the problem. So the cure, is to reduce your body weight, lose weight. And using this, these different um, options here, i.e. exercise, short-term, long-term, and looking at your diet is gonna be the way to do that. So if we draw out a graph, the vast majority of that pie chart to manage type two diabetes is lifestyle. A very small portion is medications. Now, obviously, the longer you leave it, the more the diabetes will progress and you'll find your um, medications will start to increase. The earlier you try to take control, and start to reduce your weight, the earlier you're about to turn back the clock and maybe even de-escalate your medication. Of course, there's gonna be some of you that have developed disease for genetics or age-related reasons, but generally you find that if you are only getting it because of genetics, it will be well into old age and there you don't have, sounds morbid, but you don't have a huge amount of time to live with the glucose levels uh, being high and therefore it rarely causes complications. These are the vast majority of people that are getting diagnosed in their 30s, 40s, 50s, where there's still a lot of life to live with high glucose levels, and that's when we see the complications. So there you have it, guys. Six reasons about why you have high glucose levels and type 2 diabetes and what you can do about it. 
Hope you found it useful. Remember to check out the blog, diabetesdietguide.com. This is the sort of stuff that we're always talking about with our clients and um, on our online programs. So if you need an extra helping hand to overcome those challenges that you're facing, go check it out. Or if you just want some free information, head over to the blog. It's all there for you. If you did like the video, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button as it really helps us get more exposure. And therefore, we can help more people. The YouTube algorithm likes us to be liked and therefore we'll release our video to more people and make sure you hit the bell button to be notified when we post new videos. We'll leave it there guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you later.